Hi everyone, my name is Wendy Kresak and I'm the Assistant Dean of Students for Wellness at DeSales University. My role at the university is to oversee the Health and Counseling Centers and I also do individual counseling as well. I wanted to come to you today because one common theme that I've been seeing really over all of my time at DeSales, but especially now during this new situation we're in with the COVID-19, is sleep. Sleep is an issue for many, many people. Um, actually, the average adult needs about seven to nine hours of sleep per night. That's according to the National Institute of Health. But the reality is most of us are not meeting that requirement. And in fact, um, it is known to be about 50 to 70 million American adults have some kind of sleep disorder or some kind of excessive daytime sleepiness. Now beyond this excessive fatigue that we have during the day, getting too little sleep really would be anything less than six hours or so can impact everything during your day. Now the good news is there's a lot that we can do to ensure a better night's sleep. But first let's talk about why it's important. So why is sleep so important for us? Well, first of all, getting a good night's sleep is going to help us stay alert. It's going to help our mind to regain focus and tackle all of those tricky mental challenges that come up. It can also stimulate our creativity. And in this time, when we're all learning from home, doing online classes, and trying to figure out everything that goes with that, our creativity is important. And also, our mental alertness is going to be important. It can also help to boost our memory. Sleeping is the most important time to shape memories and to make the connections between events, feelings, and experiences. In fact, sleep is a requirement to form new learning and memory pathways in the brain. It can also help us fight infection, which we all know is very important, especially now. Sleep is your body's mechanism to ward this off. And when you don't get enough sleep, your immune system is going to be weaker, and that's going to make you more susceptible to illness. Also, it helps to be active. Energy levels after a healthy night's sleep are higher, and your mental awareness is going to be more acute. Good sleep is also tied to improved athletic performance, including greater speed, agility, and reflexes. It's going to replenish our any damage that was caused by stress, um, ultraviolet rays, other harmful exposures, and it's also going to help repair muscle injuries and other traumas that we've experienced. And just really overall, it's just going to give us a better quality of life for all of the reasons that I just mentioned and so many more that I did not. Now, how do we get that better sleep? Well, I have a lot of ways. Um, hopefully you're willing to do some of them. I know some of them you might have a reaction to like, oh my gosh, I can't do that. But hear me out before you say that. First, develop a sleep schedule. So when possible, if you can go to bed at the same time every night and get up at the same time each morning, even on weekends, that will really help you to really reset that internal clock, reset your circadian rhythm so that hopefully you will maybe not even need an alarm clock to get up and maybe you won't be tossing and turning at night because you can't fall asleep. Um, really, if you don't need to use an alarm clock, that's the better. And that's the goal, that your body is going to just get in that rhythm so it knows when it needs to get up every morning and when it needs to go to bed every night. So another thing we want to do is have a routine. We want our brains, once the nighttime is coming, to know, okay, it's almost time for bed. It's almost time for sleep. And so that routine could be anything from, you know, taking the last 15 minutes before you lay down in bed to um, change your clothes, brush your teeth, maybe read a couple lines in a book, um, take your contact lenses out, you know, whatever that might be but do the same routine every night so that again, your brain says, oh, teeth are being brushed. It must be time to sleep soon. And then we wanna watch what we eat and drink at night. We really wanna limit caffeine. Um, really, I say like from the afternoon on because caffeine will stimulate us and it will be a little bit trickier for us to fall asleep. You wanna avoid those large meals before bedtime. Um, if you're used to eating later at night, maybe try implementing an earlier dinner time. 
and also avoid those rich foods within at least two hours of bed. The fatty foods are known to cause your stomach to work harder to digest, and that can possibly disrupt your sleep schedule. And just a side note, which I don't have up here, but alcohol close to bedtime is not a good idea either. You may think alcohol will help you fall asleep faster, but it actually leads to poor quality of sleep because it causes you to wake up later on during the night. And then next, we're going to talk about avoid napping. Now, this is one that I know I'm going to get some feedback on, probably. For some people, napping says, you know, that helps me kind of recharge. However, napping can lead to a cycle of poor sleep patterns, especially in people who struggle with insomnia or other sleep problems, maybe having a hard time falling asleep. So I would suggest really removing the napping from your schedule. And then getting natural light. That is so important. And how lucky are we that the spring is coming and summer is coming and hopefully the sun will be out a little bit more. Natural light is going to help your internal clock maintain a consistent sleep-wake cycle. So when you first wake up, open your curtains or your blinds and let that morning sunlight in. And then make sure throughout the day you take breaks to go outside and enjoy the fresh air and the sunlight. Managing your stress levels. I understand that can be very hard, um, but please know that high stress and anxiety levels are known to be disruptive to sleep. And when you feel overwhelmed, you need to really practice healthy ways to manage your stress. Um, get organized, set priorities, eat healthy, exercise. All these ways are gonna help your um, mind, body, and spirit. And I am in a few minutes gonna share with you some tips that we have in the Counseling Center for just that. And then one thing you really wanna be cautious of, and this can be really tricky, especially as you are all learning from home right now, is you only wanna sleep in your bed. And by that I mean don't eat in your bed, don't do homework in your bed, don't talk on the phone in bed, don't play video games in bed, anything like that. We want our brains to associate our bed with sleep. And you also wanna create a comfortable sleep environment for yourself. So do you have a dark, quiet, and cool sleeping environment? And if you do, that's gonna promote better sleep. Make sure you have a supportive mattress and a pillow. Maybe try blackout curtains, eye shades, maybe a white noise machine, a fan, um, any device that might be able to reduce those sleep distractions. And then here's the one that is gonna be probably a concerning one for all of you, which is limit the screen time. So please know that any device, TV, computers, phones, I understand they're all great ways for you to sort of unwind at the end of the day, but they are going to have a negative effect on your ability to fall asleep. Studies show that the light emitted from these devices suppresses the melatonin production, which is the naturally occurring hormone that regulates your sleep-wake cycle, and it's going to stimulate the mind. So instead of kind of being on the internet or watching a movie, why don't you read a book or listen to music to relax before bedtime? And now I'm gonna share with you some of our resources that we've put together in the Counseling Center. First of all, please check out our Facebook page, our Instagram, and our Twitter, and you can find those all there. But also, if you take a look at our Instabio account, which the web address I just put on the screen for you, that is basically a one-stop shop for all of our resources, for our internet, um, our website, for our social media accounts, for our YouTube channel, which this video will be on as soon as I'm done with it. But we really invite you to use our resources. We've put a lot of work together. Um, we've put a lot of things, many different types of resources out there for you that we know will assist you, particularly in reducing your stress and anxiety. So we hope to see you on our social media and different accounts. If you have any questions, all of our contact info is there. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks, and I hope you're having a great day.